is there. Have you ever thought your parents or teachers had eyes in the backs of their heads? How do they see so much? While no person really has eyes in the back of her head, the owl butterfly does. Well, it has eyes on the back of its wings. Technically, they aren't really eyes. They're spots that look like eyes. You see, God gave the owl butterfly an amazing way to stay safe. The back of its wings looks like the eyes of an owl. So when a predator zooms nearby looking for a tasty snack, it sees those eyes and thinks the butterfly is actually an owl. And since an owl just might turn their predator into a tasty snack, the predator quickly zooms away to search for less threatening prey. God gave the owl butterfly a unique way to chase away its fear its fear of being eaten, that is. Here's a picture for you of that. See that butterfly? Pretty cool, huh? When you decide to follow God, He chases away your fears, too. In fact, there are some things you'll never have to be frightened of again. Things like being alone, because God will never leave you. Deuteronomy 31.6 you don't have to fear mistakes either because he'll always help you and forgive you when you ask. 1 John 1, 9 And best of all, you'll never have to worry that God will stop loving you. Psalm 100, verse 5 Because he won't. Not ever. Not for a single nanosecond. Which is a billionth of a second, by the way. So the next time you're feeling a little frightened, remember who you are. You are a child of God, and let God chase away your fears. Hi, boys and girls. I wanted to um, tell you about that owl butterfly, but I also want to tell you about another amazing creature that God made and uh, talk to you about some more um, of the wonderful world of insects. Um, Miss Erin and Miss Pam sent you out, uh, well it was not from them, I'm sorry, it was on the back of the bulletin that came out a few weeks ago, this little uh, bug uh, word search puzzle, oh. and there were scriptures um, from the Bible um, about bugs. So I want to read you a couple of those scriptures. and. Um, if you didn't do your word search puzzle with those bugs, um, I hope you'll do that today. The first one is Psalm 78, verse 45. And it says, God sent vast swarms of flies to consume them and hordes of frogs to ruin them. He gave their crops to caterpillars. Their harvest was consumed by locusts. He's talking about what God did to Egypt, to the Egyptians, back when Moses was trying to let Pharaoh, um, trying to talk Pharaoh into letting the people go. So it talks about flies and caterpillars and locusts in that verse. And then I'm going to flip over to Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 5. five and six. He's talking about, he's comparing people here who lie and, and think up evil deeds to do. He says, they hatch deadly snakes and weave spiders webs. Whoever eats their eggs will die. Whoever cracks them will hatch a viper. Their webs can't be made into clothing and nothing they do is productive. We talked about spiders a little bit last week, and I want to show you another spider that uh, we did not talk about last week. This spider right here is called a wolf spider. And you remember that last week I talked to you about some different kinds of spiders, and um, the wolf spider is one of those different kinds because it does not spin webs. 
um, not all spiders catch their meals by spinning webs. A wolf spider stalks its prey and catches it. So it goes after it, doesn't wait for it to come to the, a spider web. There's another kind of spider called a jumping spider and they move very fast and have very good eyesight. Can you guess how they catch their prey? A jumping spider? Yep, they jump on it. They jump on it. Um, all spiders make silk, but not all spiders use it to spin webs. Silk also protects their eggs, helps spiders move, and provides shelter. Web spinning spiders use silk to create elaborate traps to catch their dinner. Now that's web spinning spiders, but remember we said not all spiders spin webs. Because the webs are nearly invisible, insects fly into the webs and get trapped in the sticky threads. When an insect gets trapped in the web, a spider feels the vibration of the insect's struggles and hurries to wrap the bug in more silk. Because it can't eat solid food, the spider injects its prey with digestive juices, turning the prey into a liquid mush for the spider to suck up. Sort of like a spider's version of a milkshake. Yuck. A spider's web is a sticky and deadly trap. But you know what's interesting? The spider knows which of the the silky threads are sticky and which aren't, and it knows where to step. Who told it that? Who told it how to make those elaborate webs? Yeah, God. A spider's web is a lot like the trap of lying. The first lie you spin may be small, almost invisible, so you think no one will even see it. Or maybe you didn't even tell a lie, like Joseph's brothers, remember back in the fall? That seems a long time ago, doesn't it? When we were doing Joseph in Bible class, and his brothers brought the coat home dipped in blood, and they didn't tell their father that an animal killed Joseph. They just let their father think that, and they didn't correct him, which was deceitful. And deceitfulness is the start of lying. When you start a lie that's small, you think no one will ever see it, but someone usually does. So then you spin a bigger lie to cover up the first one, and then an even bigger lie to cover up that one. Soon you're surrounded by a whole web of lies, and the one who ended up getting trapped and tangled is you. So don't ever spin that first lie. Tell the truth and keep yourself out of sticky situations. That is comparison of a spider web and how lying can be a trap uh, like a spider web is for its prey. Okay, I want to share with you one more um, animal. If you can hear, I'm outside this morning. Um, and if you listen carefully, you can hear the birds singing. And I want to share with you uh, the hummingbird, okay? We saw a first hummingbird yesterday out in front of our house. The first one for this season. The hummingbird is a flying powerhouse. It can reach speeds of up to 30 miles per hour and up to 60 miles per hour when it dives. That's how fast your car goes on the highway. Its wings beat up to 80 flaps per second. To power those wings, a hummingbird takes about 250 breaths per minute, and its heart beats 1,200 times per minute. Now, think about that. 1,200 times, your heart beats only between 70 to 100 times. All that power is packed into a tiny hummingbird package. 
The calliope hummingbird is just three inches long, making it the smallest bird in North America. But the bee hummingbird of Cuba is even tinier at only 2.25 inches long. It is the smallest bird in the world. The ruby-throated hummingbird weighs about three grams, lighter than a nickel. But the most amazing thing about hummingbirds is the way they can fly. They dart in and out between flowers, flying upright, upside down, sideways, and backwards. They can even slam on the brakes and hover in midair, and you've seen that, I'm sure. Sometimes uh, a hummingbird will actually stop. I have seen where they have landed, like on a feeder, and they actually stay there for a minute. But those, those wings beat, flap so fast, 80 flaps a second. I couldn't even count to 80 in a second. Um, it's amazing. The hummingbird lays one of the smallest eggs of any bird in the world. Their egg is about the size of a pea. The mama bird then tucks those tiny eggs into a walnut-sized nest made from spider webs and bits of plants. Isn't that interesting? Now here's a little comparison for you. Sometimes God will ask you to stop and hover, not in midair, but in your prayers. You see, God always answers your prayers. Sometimes he says yes right away, and sometimes he says no right away. But other times, God asks you to wait or hover for an answer. He wants you to be still and not try to control things to get the answer you want. God wants you to trust him and wait while he works everything in your life in just the right way. So what can you do while you wait? Hover close to God and keep praying. Keep trusting that God started answering your prayer request before you even asked it. Psalm 27, 14 says, Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. This time of... Uh, this coronavirus has been a time of waiting, hasn't it? We just haven't known exactly what's going to happen, what's going to go on, and um, we're still waiting. Um, we're waiting for parks to reopen. We're waiting for um, summertime. We're waiting to see uh, if pools will open. We found out the Lancaster pools will not be opening. Um, so we're in a time of waiting, but while we're waiting, let's take time to grow closer and closer to our God. Um, next week, I will do one more video, um, and hopefully going to have a surprise on there for you next week. Um, enjoy this beautiful day, and when you're enjoying it, remember to thank the one who made it. Okay, I love you. Bye.